But when people ask me what I do and I tell them I'm a sports lawyer, their first reaction is usually, are you negotiating you know, contracts for professional players, rugby players or soccer players? And while that is a part of sports law, it's much more kind of fundamental than that in terms of it starts at your grassroots, your club structures, uh, getting the structure right, getting a good constitution, and then emanating up through kind of disciplinary procedures, sponsorship, um, advertising deals, um, and then advising, as you said, professional players. Uh, and it's a, it covers a broad spectrum of areas. Anti-doping also is, is an area of sports law. So there's a, there's a lot of different uh, elements to it. Um, and not only, I suppose, the, just the professional contracts. I think there's one great example I can give, which is ladies Gaelic football, which people would have seen. They had a record attendance at the All-Ireland uh, final of 55,000 between Dublin and Cork. And that just doesn't come overnight. That, that comes when you start with good structures in the organisation, a good constitution, a good set of rules, and then volunteers buy into that. And that creates then a big participation and on the back of that then you get great sponsorship deals, so they have a sponsorship deal with Lidl. You'll see players on billboards all over the Dublin and the country. Um, and then a good TV deal with uh, TG Carrot. They all obviously have to be negotiated through lawyers. Sport is an incredibly emotional uh, pastime, and it's more than a pastime, it's a way of life. Uh, especially in, in sports like the GAA where people give their life to it. And it's absolutely understandable that you'll have emotions running high and you'll have players and managers and administrators and, and everybody wants their say. And the one thing I suppose that's objective and that's independent is a good set of rules. We've uh, a lot of experience of reviewing rules and making them, bringing them up in standard to best in class in terms of uh, complying not only with Irish guidelines but international standards as well, but also tailoring them to the specific body as well and making it easy to read, easy to use and fair and transparent rules and linking it in then with other rules, for example, the constitution, for example, GDPR requirements, so linking it all in together. Um, and it's not, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not easy, but it's, it's essentially it's very doable. We do a lot of it here. And it's amazing about how that just gives everybody in the club a bit of a lift in terms of feeling that they're, they're all in a club which is fair, transparent, and everybody gets kind of a, a good, say, crack of the whip, so to speak, in terms of uh, any disputes or grievances or disciplinary issues that, that arise.